Chapter 5, UA Sports Festival. Inside the USJ. Shigoraki is trying his best to stay standing due to his injuries from the Nomu slamming into him. He couldn't help but watch as All Might beat down his creature then sent him out of the building with a devastating attack. He was furious and in pain thinking that he might just get caught, that's when Kirajiri appeared next to him holding his side. The Mist villain then said. Tamura we must escape while the heroes are distracted. Shigoraki looked at All Might menacingly while the portal swallowed him up and took the two away. Back at the entrance. Principal Nizu is giving out orders to the heroes as they storm the USJ. Priority 1 is securing the safety of our students, then we arrest every single one of these villains. We need to figure out how they found out about this location. 13 then replied to that by saying. Children follow midnight outside to safety, ectoplasm I have one tied up over here. When 13 looked to where Kirajiri had been, there was nothing left but a pile of robes. Back at the bus. The students were all talking at once and a lot of them were detailing what happened after they got warped away. Aoyama, as usual said something weird and vague, while Mina and Toru cried out because of how frightened they were. Todoroki with his same emotionless face just said. The villains were a joke compared to that thing All Might fought. He then looked out the corner of his eye to his green-haired classmate currently surrounded by Yurerika, Ida, Tsu and Yoiorozu. Yurerika cut off everyone else's words when she loudly said. Diku, what was that thing you used on the warping guy? Ida interjected. I was actually curious about that myself. I remember seeing you use it during the entrance exam. Tsu nodded then said. Right, you used it to save Mineta and me Ribbit. Yoi Orozu stood there confused seeing as though she never saw what everyone was describing. So, she asked. What happened when you went to hell? Did you fight that creature All Might defeated? Feeling a little overwhelmed Izuku thought to himself. I wonder if this is what I sound like when I start muttering. Izuku whistled loudly, which got everyone's attention in order to answer their questions. Time out guys, it's hard to keep up with everybody talking at once. This silenced the other teens before Izuku went on to explain. The thing I used is called Black Whip, with my quirk I can manipulate my energy into different forms. Izuku then stuck his fist up and a small black object the size of a jump rope came out of his hand. The students looked in awe at the sight and Midoriya continued answering the questions. When I found Izawa's sensei that creature had him by the head, I ran in to save him and kicked the creature away. After that I told him everything that he missed since he entered the fight. We used the earbuds you created to coordinate our moves and created an opening for All Might when he arrived. Ida responded first. It was a brave thing wanting to save our classmates but next time you should listen to our teachers. We are just first years after all. Tsu replied. Yeah, but if he didn't act, we all probably wouldn't be here. Midoriya after hearing their words just said. I know but if there's something I can do about someone in danger. He looked up to meet eyes with everyone listening. I'll always help in any way I can isn't that why we're here to become heroes. The other students just stared at the boy as his words hit home for them. Yoi Orozu had a flashback to that day Izuku saved her and then thought to herself. So that's what drives him to jump headfirst into danger, he's something else. All of the students then heard the voice of 13 instructing them to get on the bus. Once everyone was cleared medically and their statements were gathered the kids headed back to the campus. Later that night, Izuku had to pull the phone away from his ear as his best friend screamed out on the other end. What happened? Are you okay? I heard you guys were attacked by villains. Midoriya then replied. Itsuka calm down everyone is fine, minus some scrapes and bruises no one got hurt besides the villains. The girl let out a sigh of relief before saying. Well give me some details, I want to know what it was like to face actual villains. Midoriya chuckled before he said. Let's just say you owe me 1200 yen. Kendo paused then gasped figuring out what her friend meant by that then she exclaimed. You actually did it? A hurricane kick just like Ken from Street Fighter. 
Two days later, after the USJ incident Mr. Aizawa made an announcement that the sports festival will be held in two weeks. Some of the students voiced their concerns about having such a public event right after villains attacked their school buddy explained to them that UA needs to show the world that we are not easily shaken. This made Izuku remember about his meeting with All Might after school, while the rest of class expressed excitement about having the chance to display their talents in front of a live audience. The following day at the end of class Eureka screeched at the sight of a large crowd of students standing outside of their classroom. Bakugo, irritated at the scene in front of him walked towards the door and spoke. Get out of my way you zeros. The crowd started opening up and the students started stepping out of the way until a purple-haired teen with bags under his eyes stood in the blonde's way. He then spoke. I guess it's true, everyone in the hero course are all assholes. Bakugo just glared at the boy staring him down before responding. The last thing the hero course needs is another weakling like you in it, it's bad enough with all of these extras. Bakugo then walked off without saying another word. Kirishima just said to himself. That was super manly and insulting at the same time. A gray-haired boy with shark-like teeth then stepped up from the back of the crowd while saying. I'm Tetsu Tetsu, from class 1B and just because you guys fought some villains doesn't make you better than us. Come on, I'll prove it to you right now. Class 1A just looked at all of the animosity that was stirring up in front of them. Suddenly Midoriya made his way to the door while saying. Wasn't it George Eliot that said, don't judge a book by its cover? This got everyone's attention before he continued. It wasn't like villains nearly killing us was on the lesson plan, we did what heroes are supposed to do and stopped them the best we could. His words making perfect sense to all of the teens making them reconsider their first impression of the situation. As Midoriya walked past the purple-haired boy he said. Just because you found one bad apple, doesn't mean you give up on the whole tree. I hope next time we meet it's under better circumstances but anyways you guys have a nice day. Midoriya walked off stunning the rest of the students who weren't familiar with his altruistic nature. As he kept walking the purple-haired boy screamed out. I'll see you in the sports festival, you all better bring your A-game or I'll be taking your slot in the hero course. Without turning around Izuku just gave him a thumbs up and just kept walking, the rest of class 1A followed the boy and made their way down the hall. When Midoriya left the campus to make his way to the train station, he walked past Bakugo leaning on a tree. Bakugo then spoke. Deku. Midoriya just kept walking before Bakugo spoke again. Deku, you damn nerd don't ignore me. Not faced by the blonde's harsh words the boy continued his amble until he heard. His former friends say. Midoriya. This stopped him dead in his tracks and made him turn around, that's when he saw Bakugo walking up on him slowly while saying. I won't lose to you again, just because you fought beside our teacher doesn't make you hot shit. I'll win the sports festival by crushing you, proving once and for all that you're nothing compared to me. For the first time since the mock battle Midoriya spoke to Bakugo, he replied by saying. If that's the case then prove it. This made Katsuki raise an eyebrow of curiosity. The green-haired boy turned around and started walking while saying. I plan on making it to the finals, if you make it there, we'll see who's the best. Oh, and Bakugo, no excuses this time. Midoriya turned the corner and left the blonde boy's sight, infuriated by the words of his former friend. He took off after him but when he made it to the corner the boy was gone. Bakugo then said through gritted teeth. How dare you? I'll make it to the finals and when I do, I'll beat you so bad that you'll wish you never got into UA. I promise you that. His words dripped with venom and his blood pumped with fury fueling the rivalry that had been going on for the past five years. A week later, Midoriya found himself pulling a tractor trailer truck on All Might's private field in preparation for the sports festival. The exhausted boy struggled under the weight of the large vehicle currently tethered to his back, a task that became more stressful as All Might barked orders through a megaphone. Come on, keep it up young Midoriya just 50 more feet. The boy said under his breath. Yeah, that's easy for you to say, you're riding in a golf cart and I'm pulling a freaking truck filled with broken down cars. 
All Might then said. I didn't quite catch that young man. Izuku responded. Nothing sir. It took 30 more agonizing minutes before the task was complete. The boy dropped to the ground and nearly fainted from the workout. All Might walked over to him then said. You have 10 minutes to catch your breath, then you got some running to do. By running he meant 500 laps around the track that ended with the boy collapsing from it as a result. The pro put the boy through the ringer preparing him for the sports festival, but the results were worth it. The Yayoi Orozu Estate Momo is taking on her judo instructor, he landed a solid blow on the teen, but she used his momentum to flip her teacher onto his back. He then tapped out seeing as though this was the fifth time it happened in the last 15 minutes. Yayoi Orozu then removed her helmet and mouth guard before saying. I hope I didn't hurt you, I've really been practicing, and I can't wait to shut up a certain green-haired know-it-all jerk. That made her teacher chuckle before he responded. Well, if this pain is any indication of what they have coming. I feel sorry for whoever it is. Yayoi Orozu then helped her sensei to his feet then the two both bowed to each other. As the teacher left, she recalled the memory of her last conversation with Midoriya. Flashback to a week ago. Hey Izuku, do you want to train with me for the sports festival? Midoriya scratched the back of his head before saying. I actually have a lot of extra training to do myself but maybe we could get together this weekend to train. Yoi Orozu replied. Okay sounds like a plan, so what type of training are you gonna be doing? Midoriya spoke without considering how he phrased his answer. Some extreme weightlifting along with some non-traditional sparring. It's the kind of stuff you need a little bit more muscles to do. Yayoi Orozu stopped walking and then balled up her fist, this caught the boy off guard not knowing why this upset her. The raven-haired girl offended by his words just said. So, you think I'm not strong enough to keep up with you or something? Midoriya knowing that he said the wrong thing tried to fix the situation. No no no, that's not what I meant at all. But before he could explain what he meant to Yoi Orozu she stormed off while muttering to herself. Stupid jerk I'll show you. The boy was left there not knowing what else to do, he just pondered on a way to fix his mistake. In times like this when he couldn't come up with the right answer, he went to his mother to seek some advice on how to best handle the situation. After discussing things out with Ainko, he thought it would be best to talk to Momo after the sports festival when everyone's tensions are much lower. Another week went by, and the day has come, all the students from class 1A had put themselves through some intense training. Knowing that one of their classmates had taken on a creature that was supposed to kill All Might, they did not want to get outshined again. Once Yayoi Orozu and Ida finished giving the class instructions on today's procedures, everyone waited idly by for the event to start. Todoroki then called Midoriya out in front of the whole class. Midoriya. Izuku turned to his classmate to see what he wanted, Todoroki then said. Objectively you appear to be the strongest in our class, and I think that's why everyone seems to follow you. Midoriya raised an eyebrow then crossed his arm in a defensive manner before the boy went on. Nevertheless, that won't stop me from defeating you, I don't care how much you've been holding back I'll still win if it comes down to you and me. Todoroki then turned around and started walking away before Midoriya spoke. I'm not sure what about me pisses you off, but you got another thing coming if you think I'm going to back down. Midoriya then unfolded his arms and walked towards Todoroki before he said. And I'm not the only person you should be worrying about, our class is filled with competition, so you'd be a fool to underestimate any one of them. The two then glared at each other only breaking eye contact when Todoroki exited the room. But Hugo standing to the side taking note of everything that was just said, the rest of the class just nodded as Midoriya turned around and gave everyone a thumbs up. As class 1A entered the arena the sun nearly blinded them from its rays, the effect which was drowned out by the roar of the crowd watching the competitors walk onto the field. Midnight started introducing the rest of the classes who will be taking part in today's competition. While looking at all of the students walk by Izuku started taking notes as he saw a few quirks he'd never seen before, his thoughts were interrupted when he heard Midnight shout. 
And for today's opening ceremony speech, we have Izuku Midoriya. The green-haired boy put his journal away and walked over to the stage. Once he got up there next to midnight, some nervousness washed over him until he looked and saw All Might giving him an assuring nod. He started talking as he looked over the crowd. I'm honored to be competing with such a prestigious group today. As I look at all of my peers, I would like for you to do one thing, close your eyes and imagine the best version of you possible, because that's who you really are. Let go of any part of you that doesn't believe that. I'm only here because someone believed in my dream of becoming a hero, this is something I believe we all have in common. So, I want to wish everyone good luck and let's all go beyond plus ultra. Everyone in the stadium stood and applauded at the boy's words, as Midoriya walked back to be with his class people thanked him for his kind words and wished him luck as well. But Hugo of course scoffed at the greenhead's words as he got prepared for the first event. That's when Midnight spun the wheel and it landed on obstacle race. Once the rules were explained Midoriya started stretching after removing his wrist and ankle weights. Something that all might had the support course make up for him. Feeling like he just put down a car Izuku breathed an exhilaration from dropping all that weight, suddenly he heard his best friend say. Are you ready to lose to me today? Midoriya looked over to see Kendo stretching directly behind him. He stood up from his pose then said. Sure, but I didn't realize hell froze over. I really got to make sure I watch the news before I leave the house in the morning. Kendo then took on a more serious facial expression before she replied. Oh, is that right? Well I guess we'll see which class makes it to the finals then. Kendo walked off leaving Midoriya there to ponder her words, he then spotted Yeo Iorozu getting ready for the race. He wanted to go say something to her, but he figured it'll be best to stick to his original plan. Everyone then lined up as the announcers started the countdown. 10. 9. 8. 7. 6. Eureka standing next to Midoriya said. Good luck. He then said it right back before Midnight screamed out go. All the participants rushed to the tunnel at the same time squishing each other in the process, that's when a streak of green light flew over the other students in a flash clearing the tunnel. Everyone in the tunnel was too busy fighting to hear the announcement that was just made. Todoroki seized this opportunity to take out his competition by releasing his ice and freezing the other students in the tunnel. He ran through the other end of the tunnel thinking he had stopped everyone before he heard. Not so fast icy hot. But Hugo along with Yeo Iorozu, Mineta, Saro and Takoyami came springing out the tunnel behind him. Already expecting this tactic class 1A prepared for this just in case it happened. Once a hole opened in the tunnel students who weren't still frozen started making their way to the next section of the course. That's when the robots showed up ruining any chance of things getting better for the heroes in training. General study students were having trouble with the mechanical obstruction while the hero course started laying waste to the machines. That was until the zero pointers showed up, Todoroki saw the giant robots and arrogantly smiled as he froze them in their tracks. Once clear to move he ran between their legs to get to the next obstacle. The other students noticed there was a path to use, but shortly after realized he only froze the robot to help himself. The once leaning and now falling tower of metal came crashing down on some of the participants. Luckily it was Kirishima and Tetsu Tetsu who possessed quirks that allowed them to withstand the falling debris. Not feeling bad about someone possibly getting hurt Todoroki continued to the next area while avoiding pieces of a zero pointer in his path. His run came to a halt when he stood before a chasm filled with pillars made out of rock and all connected by rope. This gave other students like Su and Ida a chance to catch up seeing as though Todoroki couldn't fly or jump for long distances. Once Bakugo caught up, he used his quirk to propel himself over the wide gaps and land on each pillar bringing him one step closer to Todoroki. A girl with pink dreadlocks came flying over Tsu as she slung through the chasm thanks to her self-repelling rope and hoover boots. When Todoroki made it to the last obstacle, he saw the sign that red landmines ahead so he had to take his time crossing the field. When the rest of the other students caught up, they started rushing to cross the field, but some started setting off the mines. 
After witnessing what happened, students with sensory quirks used their abilities to avoid the mines. Todoroki was still in the lead and taking his time until he heard his loudmouth classmate approach, but Hugo blasted over to Todoroki then said. You challenged the wrong guy I see hot. Bakugo then shot past Todoroki taking first place, seeing this caused Todoroki to create a path made of ice and took off after Bakugo. Not caring that this might help the other students he caught up to the blonde and they started tussling with one another trying to take the other out. Once the rest of the students started closing in on the pair, Todoroki used his ice to set off a mine in front of Bakugo's path. The explosion went off covering the boys in a cloud of pink smoke, from the cloud Todoroki came sprinting out of it heading down the last stretch. A few seconds later Bakugo came shooting out of the smoke directly behind Todoroki, but when Todoroki entered the last tunnel, he put up a wall of ice in order to slow Bakugo down. It didn't take long for the explosion user to make light work of the ice but it caused him to enter the arena about 10 seconds slower than Todoroki. Once he crossed the finish line, he heard present Mike call out. But Hugo takes third place. This distraction made him run into the back of Todoroki who was puzzled by the news that he came in second place. The pair looked at each other before noticing their green-haired rival leaning on the stage while yawning. They then heard him say. You guys gave it your all back there I'm glad to see your training came in handy, although it looks like you could use more practice. He walked off leaving the two boys speechless, Todoroki then spoke. But when did he get in front of us? Present Mike then said. Here's another look at how our first place winner obliterated the obstacle course. As the rest of the students came pouring back into the stadium, a video recant of the race started playing. It showed the crowd of students sandwiching themselves into the tunnel but when everyone started forcing their way into the cramped space. That's when the video slowed down, and a green streak was shown zipping over the other students. That green streak then exited the tunnel a split second later revealing itself to be Izuku Midoriya. Once he cleared the tunnel he smashed through the oncoming three-pointers effortlessly, after that he came upon a zero-pointer and then leapt into the air punching straight through its chest. A few seconds later he came shooting out of its back and landed on the ground before taking off running again. When he started running the zero pointer blew up into pieces scattering its parts all over the path. The camera then switches to the second obstacle of the race, where Midoriya easily jumped from pillar to pillar clearing the chasm in less than a minute. When he finally made it to the minefield, the green head stopped to assess the situation. You could then see the green haired boy close his eyes and start hopping into the field steadily avoiding the mines. He made clear and precise jumps making sure he never landed on one of the explosives until he got to the end. Once there he leapt over the last section clearing the field and ran into the tunnel securing his first place victory. Todoroki then said to himself. When I was dealing with the zero pointer present Mike had made the announcement that Midoriya won, but no one could hear due to all of the fighting going on. But Hugo started to foam at the mouth with anger thinking to himself. I never even saw him get past me, damn it he beat me again. He then let off an explosion which scared any nearby students that were trying to catch their breath. Once the last participant returned to the stadium, Midnight went over the details for the next round. Like in Canon Ajiro and Shota dropped out and were replaced by Shiazuki and Tetsu Tetsu. After Midoriya got turned down by Ida who joined Todoroki's team, he saw that Yeo Iorozu had also decided to team up with the half-hot half-cold student. Judging from the look she was giving Izuku took this as a sign that she was still mad, but he didn't let that stop him from moving forward. He then heard an unfamiliar voice say. Hey, you in first place, team up with me and I'll let you use all of my cute babies. Midoriya not knowing what she meant by that then saw her pull out a case filled with her support items. She then introduced herself. I'm Meihatsum, soon to be the greatest inventor in the world. She then displayed all types of different useful equipment but what caught his eye was her jetpack. Hatsum then said. Oh, I see you got your eye on my jetpack baby. Izuku then said as he thoroughly examined the device. Yes, it reminds me of the one Airjet has, have you thought about replacing the copper wires with poly-coated aluminum ones? 
that would reduce the chance of overheating and bring your cost down. He then put the jetpack back in the case before saying, Your inventions are amazing and I'm looking forward to seeing you become the greatest inventor one day. This made Hatsume pause then lift her goggles up to stare at the boy. Izuku stared back and noticed the crosshairs in her eyes figuring that it was a part of her quirk. Yurerika then spoke. Hey, are you okay? Hatsume then shook herself out of her trance before asking the green-haired boy. What is your name again? Midoriya then replied. I'm sorry about that I'm Izuku Midoriya of class 1A. Hatsume then repeated. Izuku Midoriya, for now on I'll be your sole support item provider. Let's show the world my babies together. Midoriya just scratched the back of his head before saying. Sure, why not? Yurerika then said to herself. I wonder if they even realize that I'm still here. Once all that was settled Midoriya then thought about who could replace Ida as their horse for the cavalry battle. He then saw the perfect person for the job and made his way towards them. While that was going on Kendo was giving her team a pep talk when she overheard a purple haired boy talking to some other students like they were animals. Not wanting to let that distract her she decided to address it later, but Hugo was telling his team over and over again. No matter what happens we are going to kill Deku and take his 10 million points. Then we are going to kill him again and again. Kirishima then replied to his partner's rants. Aren't you going a little too far with this? But Hugo gave the redhead a death glare which made Kirishima say. Maybe we could kill him a little bit I guess. With everyone saddled up and ready for the battle, most of the competitors had their eye on the first place winner. With his team finally complete, Izuku sat upon the back of Takoyami with Hatsume and Yurerika on his sides. As Midnight prepared to wave the starting flag, Midoriya spoke to his team. Remember the plan everyone and we should come out on top. Everyone nodded then braced themselves right before Midnight announced. Let the cavalry battle begin. Immediately when the battle began Takoyami released Dark Shadow, the creature then dug its claw into the ground behind the group. This created a brace for what Midoriya had planned, once Dark Shadow said ready Izuku powered up one for all to 35%. As all the approaching teams got within range, he fired off his attack. Detroit Smash this caused Todoroki to defend his team with a wall of ice, but Hugo had Kirishima anchor himself to the ground while Saro used tape to reinforce the four. For the rest of the teams, they struggled to stay on their feet as the air pressure from the attack hit them like a truck. A large dust cloud was formed and everyone watching the battle couldn't see a thing, a few minutes later Team Midoriya came flying out of the dust cloud floating above the other students. Next thing everyone saw is what looked like an explosion go off dispersing the huge cloud that covered the field. Once all of the other teams that were still on the ground could finally see, five teams had realized that their headbands had been stolen. Team Todoroki, still having their points looked up to see Team Midoriya floating above everyone else. Seeing this as their chance the class 1B students started making their move. Nito Monoma, the copy quirk user decided to take the points off of Team Bakugo, he would later learn that this was a mistake. As Team Bakugo took off to get their points back, Team Midoriya started descending back to the ground. Right before landing Izuku's danger sense went off and called for Takoyami to defend the attack coming from Jiro. Midoriya then told his classmate. You gotta be quicker than that. Team Midoriya then saw a set of flying horns heading in their direction, Midoriya stuck out both of his hands preparing to flick his fingers. He then released a Delaware smash sending the horns crashing into the ground negating the attack. Once the coast was clear they took off running, as they tried to blast off again a projectile came out of nowhere and hit the jetpack. Once Midoriya noticed two more projectiles were fired at them, this time hitting the Hoover boots clipping their metaphorical wings. Spotting where the shots were coming from, they saw Team Todoroki, Yeoi Orozu and Kaminari with slings shots in their hands. Todoroki then created a wall of ice around the two teams and cut them off from the rest of the players. Todoroki then spoke. I hope you had fun being in first place for a little while, but I'll be taking that headband now. Midoriya then smiled before saying. Is that right? 
Well, I guess you're in for a disappointment. Team Midoriya then got ready for the battle to keep their points, Izuku started analyzing his opponents to come up with a strategy. Realizing that if it comes down to who's faster Takoyami definitely couldn't outrun Ida which left him with no choice, but to keep the other teams at bay until time was up. Ida then took off in their direction following Todoroki's orders. In response, Izuku fired off a Delaware smash pushing Ida back and nearly knocking Yeo Iorozu off as a result. Takoyami took off running trying to get to the other side, when Team Bakugo came blasting through a section in the wall of ice. Now Team Midoriya was in a three-way standoff with the two people who wanted to beat him the most. With his back against the wall and one minute left it looked like they had no choice but to fight. Bakugo then said. I finally found you Deku. Todoroki then spoke. You'll have to wait in line Bakugo cause those points are coming with me. Midoriya then said. I'll just wait outside while you guys work this out. Grave accent. Midoriya then punched the wall of ice behind him shattering it into pieces and this created a snowy mist that disguised their getaway. As they made their way through the mist the team felt safe seeing as though the time was almost up when Team Todoroki came whizzing by the mat breakneck speed snatching Team Midoriya's headband in the process. With a look of shock and confusion Midoriya asked. What was that? Ida then replied to the boy. I told you Midoriya, that I had something special for you in this competition. My trump card is what secured our victory today. Todoroki even surprised by Ida's speed took a few moments to gather his thoughts before raising his hand in victory and saying. I told you Midoriya that these points were coming with me. Team Bakugo following Team Todoroki came shooting out of the same hole, Bakugo then screamed out. Who's got the points? That's when a whistle blew signaling that the cavalry battle was over. Midoriya then hopped down off of Takoyami's back and spoke. Hey Todoroki, were you talking about these points? Shoto then saw Midoriya twirling the 10 million point headband around his finger, this made him look at the one in his own hand realizing it was only worth 90 points. Izuku then spoke again. Remember in the beginning of the battle when I launched my attack that covered the field in dust, I took that opportunity to grab a few extra headbands while everyone couldn't see. So, when I jumped through your ice wall a minute ago, that's when I swapped out the 10 million point headband with the one in your hand. Being angered by this the half-hot half-cold teen's flames started protruding from his left side, but he stopped them once he saw what he had accidentally done. End of chapter 5